Hey YouTube, it's Brother Mark here. I hope you're well and good. Uh, it's Sunday morning here in the UK and I wanted to share some scripture today that uh, I just wanted to, to talk about really. Not not really a, a scripted video as such, more something to get you thinking. So um, it's from 2 Timothy chapter 2 and um, I've often referred to verses 24 to 26 but actually it's good to read a few of the verses beforehand. So 24 and 26 I'll, I'll read as part of what I'm going to read now. And these are verses I've long loved and admired and, and sought to be uh, more like. Um, but I wanted to read some of the verses before that because there's good instruction in righteousness for the Christian here. And um, the truth of the matter and, and something that I often talk about on this channel and when I speak to Christians is our Christian walk and just how difficult it is. And I think... This is something that's not really spoken of too much. I mean, you'll see people talking about uh, the gospel, uh, you know, the, the definition of repentance and and uh, the, the rapture and other things like that and, and a lot of theological stuff, right? But what you don't really hear people talking about when you meet them, when you fellowship, when you're watching things, for example, you don't really hear people talking about the Christian walk that much. And the problem is, this is the thing that after you get saved, that you need the most help with. And this is something that I wanted to talk about briefly today, depending on the video and, and, and how this goes. But um, So in addition to the verses 24 to 26, I wanted to actually start at verse 19 and talk about those verses. And today, if you come across this video and you're watching, I want you to examine your Christian walk and ask yourself some tough questions. So let's get reading. Verse 19, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honour and some to dishonour. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto, unto honour, sanctified and meet, for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strifes. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. Really, really good verses. So I wanted to focus on a few here and uh, just talk about um, you know, some of the things that are mentioned. But verse 19 was the one that really struck me. Um, I was reading that this morning, and uh, it struck me as being particularly important. So uh, midway through it says, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And here's the important part. Um, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. You know, as a Christian, you can descend into this. You can descend into sin. You can descend into heresy. You can fall into a pit and, and really struggle in your Christian walk. But these are volitional things. You know, when we struggle, when we um, give heed to temptation, for example, um, you know, these are things that can happen to a Christian. You read all these various accounts in the scripture, you know, um, Ananias and Sapphira holding back money. Um, uh, the, uh, the Christian in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, I think it is, I think it's 5, who commits incest. You know, he, he lays with his father's wife, his stepmother. And uh, so... A Christian can make quite terrible mistakes, and I think one of the common misconceptions for for the unsaved, and I remember this when I was unsaved, that you know you you have this impression that Christians live this incredibly pure and peaceful and and uh, you know unscathed life, and they don't sin anymore, uh, they don't make mistakes, and they don't do this thing or that thing. The truth is, they do, and uh, if anything, Christians, I believe struggle more because of the conviction of sin and, and even the slightest infraction 
can can really cause us a lot of problems, a lot of uh, despair, a lot of sorrow, a lot of depression, and it can overtake you, as that Christian found from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Uh, he was uh, overtaken with overmuch sorrow, I think it, it, it mentions in the scripture later on, or the potential is, is there for that to happen if he's not forgiven and encouraged and supported and helped and uh, you know brought back into the fold, so to speak. Um, it's a difficult walk. It's a difficult walk. But it's volitional. And this means you have an active part to play in this as a Christian. You have these choices to make. And the truth is, we know that's true. Um, you know, if you're presented with the opportunity to get drunk, and yet you know drunkenness specifically is a sin, and yet you choose to do that, you know, that's a volitional thing. You're not um, being dragged into that against your will and, uh, you, you know, you're being forced to do that. And it's it's nothing that you can actively stop or control. It's simply not true. And the scripture here confirms that. It says that we should depart from iniquity, meaning that it's there. The risk is always there. The risk of sin is always there. The risk of heresy is always there. You know, the risk of getting into problems with that side of things. When you actually look a bit further forward, um, the warning, if we read 15 actually to 18 as well, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, but shun, meaning you can you not do this right, but shun profane and vain babblings. And why should we do that? For they will increase unto more ungodliness. There's a risk. and But this is a choice that we can make. And their word will eat us doth a canker, of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthrow the faith of some. We can make these mistakes. We can be affected by what other people say. This is the problem, this 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 idea of of a perfect Christian walk. And I think that's why we end up beating ourselves up about it all the time, because we know the mistakes we make almost every single day, but we're told in the scriptures to die daily, that God's mercies are renewed every morning in lamentations, right? Um, and that's why it's important for us to not get dragged down, not to be so overwhelmed with this life, because we groan with creation, as it says in, in Romans. We long, you know, we yearn to, to depart and be with the Lord, as it says in um, uh, Philippians, right? Chapter one, I believe. You know, there's a reason that it affects us so grievously, right? But we are told that naming the name of Christ, those of us that do that, Christians, should depart from iniquity. And we're told that there are two types of vessels in this great house. And some are gold and silver, but some are wood and earth. Some are honour, you know, and respectively, some are dishonour. You can get Christians that are really, really messed up. And, and what you tend to hear and, and find nowadays is that people will, will believe that they're false converts or they're not really saved or, or outright declare that they're not saved at all, right? But the truth is you can end up in that way. You can end up really messed up. You can end up really struggling in your walk and making mistakes. But the truth is there's a way out from this situation. In verse 21, if a man therefore purge himself from these, right, he shall be a vessel unto honour sanctified and then what and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work meaning that you can also not be in that position and that's volitional and you need to get out of that mess right whatever it is that you're dealing with you know whether it's a, a particular sin whether it's simply just iniquity itself you know whether you're just messed up whether you're engaged in all of these profane and vain babblings and so on right there's, you can get out of that, but it's a choice that you have to make. You're told to depart from iniquity. You're told to shun these profane uh, babblings. You're told in verse 22 to flee youthful lust. It doesn't mean that when you're a Christian, you will never, you know, not experience that youthful lust, right? You're told to follow righteousness. It's an active thing that you need to do as a Christian. And I think this is the risk for a lot of new Christians. And, and in some ways, I think I was glad that I was never warned about this I suppose when I first got saved because if I knew how hard the, the walk would be because no one ever said it was going to be easy of course but if I knew how hard it was going to be I may have not gotten saved in the first place and that's a risk you know that that we end up learning as we you know spend more and more years walking as a Christian we end up seeing just how hard it is you know we do the things that we 
would not, as, as Paul says, and those things that we want to do, we don't do. And this is our struggle, the duality of being a Christian. And, and you know, the thing that we should seek for, of course, is to purge ourselves from these things, to not let the old man have dominance again. All right. It talks about concupiscence in the Bible, the dominion over our flesh that sin has. You know, we need to it's an active fight, really, to be honest with you, purging. When you purge something, that's an extreme ejection of, of whatever that is. Right. And that's what we should be doing. So there is a way back. And no matter how bad your walk is, um, fellow brethren, there's a way back. <clears throat> and verses like this should encourage you, actually. Right. To flee those youthful lusts, no matter how old you are as well. Flee those youthful lusts and follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace. With who? With them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Amen. You know, it's good, right? But again, look what it says here as we go further on. Talking about strife, which is a common problem. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid. Again, it's an active role, right? Knowing that they do gender strifes, and they do, and everybody's seen it. Everybody's seen it, you know, whether here on, on YouTube, whether in person, the relationships and, and fellowship that we've had with other Christians. You know that that's what happens. You know that that's what happens. And we're told as servants in 24 not to strive. What is the admonition? But to be gentle unto all men, saved and lost, Right? saved and lost we're called to have a good report of those without to the lost as well and i think some christians get uh, down the road where they become so angry and so defensive and so um, prideful that they start to treat the lost as as almost a second class citizen and talk quite disgracefully about people everyone has a soul you know, everyone has the, the possibility of getting saved. To appreciate it's not many mighty, not many noble, the scripture says. But there's a chance for everyone. And if we're not careful how we present the gospel, how we um, are ambassadors for Christ, how we look to others, the damage that you can do is almost incalculable. And we have to ex exercise extreme caution, right? In meekness, it talks about in verse 25. Why? Instructing those that oppose themselves, the lost. If God, peradventure, will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, that's salvation. So our witness is critical. So there's, it's a tough, tough thing, brethren. That's why I'm talking about this today. That's why I'm reading these verses. It's tough to be a Christian. And, and don't let anybody tell you that it's not, because the truth is, it is. And you only need to read through the pages of Scripture to see how difficult it really is. When you look at the life of... Uh, the Apostle Paul, Stephen, or the struggles that Peter went through and so on. There's countless examples of just how difficult it was and is for a Christian. But verses like this do help us and it kind of helps us kind of reorientate our walk in, in some ways. But, you know, I'm here in this video to say that, you know, that, that does happen. It does happen. A Christian walk is not easy. It's not easy at all. And you can end up as a vessel of wooden earth and dishonour. And that can happen as a Christian. And you need to be mindful of that. Wherefore, he that thinketh he standeth, you know, take heed lest you fall, you know, paraphrasing. And this is the other problem, you know, I think with, with quite a few Christians, you have this kind of sense that you're quite stable where you are. Um, and you don't think that you can ever fall. The truth is you can. You do and you will. And it's being ready for that when it happens. Because the truth is, it will happen. And I think sometimes when that does happen, people are forced to call into question, sometimes whether they're even saved at all. It's not easy. It's not easy at all. So these are good verses. So my exhortation, I guess, on this video, this short video that I'm recording uh, today, is certainly from verse 19. Let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. It's an active role and choice, brethren. And it's something that we need to work on and we need to get better at. It's something that I'm trying to do, and it's not easy. You know, when I'm when I'm here, I've been recording videos here for some time now, and I still struggle. I, I still make mistakes, terrible mistakes. You know, that's just the reality. And and anyone that says that they don't, you really have to caution, uh, you know, yourself to to pay attention to those people because there's something not quite right there. So you won't get that here in this channel. But I don't profess to be 
you know some ministry leader or something like that i'm just a just a christian and i, I share what i share on here and i hope that people get something from it and uh you know that they think about the word of god and uh, examine their life as i do mine so i don't ever present it here you know as if i'm something uh, special I, I most certainly am not and that's another reason why i'm reading these verses and why i'm kind of talking about what i am because um you know these are encouraging to me they help me understand and um you know, hopefully they do with you but um so yeah so i really like verse 24 to 26 i've often often quoted them they're in um you know a green color here in my bible they've been verses i've i've greatly reflected on many many times but what i haven't done so much maybe is read some of the verses before in detail and um you know, it's really, really good, actually. It's, uh, you know, it makes you think a bit more and it gives you a bit of hope that, you know, if you just purge those things from your life, and it's an active task for you to do. If you just purge that, you should be a vessel unto honour, verse 21, sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. You know if you're having trouble when you find that you don't appear to be doing anything you know, for, for your master, the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, if, if things aren't kind of working out for you, you probably need to examine that side of things. You know, if, um, yeah, if you're not so active like that, you need to examine that, that maybe there's something going on there. And again, it's not to stand in condemnation or judgment, but to ask yourself, are you really fleeing those youthful lusts in your life are you really fleeing them are you really following righteousness ask yourself this question are you really truly following righteousness faith charity and peace with them that call uh, on the lord out of a pure heart are you really doing that and that, that's kind of what i'm trying to get out with this video just to ask you are you really honestly truly doing those things and my answer to that question is no being really honest with you it's not and i can tell you know, over the last year or two, that that's what I've been struggling with. And that's a fact, Just freely admitting it here. I'm not not um, embarrassed to talk about that. I am ashamed about it, of course, because as a Christian, your standard is so high and it should be high and you should be uh, seeking after that. But life and problems and challenges and struggles and hardships have a way of dragging you down and damaging your faith and affecting you physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally. And it's not a good place to be, brethren, but it takes an active role to get out of it. So, you know, I wanted to record this video and just kind of share a few things, share a few verses that, that have impacted me. Uh, I was reflecting on it this morning, in fact, and... Um, these are good verses, so I'm going to put this out there and again ask you the question, you know, how's your walk? How's your Christian walk? How are you doing as a Christian? And just ask you to, to reflect on that. You know, if you want to leave a comment here, by all means, please do so. If you want to send me an email, BibleBelieverUK at gmail.com, if I can uh, reply to you, I will. Apologies if there's a bit of a delay sometimes. Um, but I'd be interested to hear what, what you think about this you know so um yeah that's that's kind of it i guess so thank you for watching god bless and godspeed